1534, King Henry VIII of England officially began the English branch of the Protestant Reformation by his act of supremacy, declaring himself the head of the English Church, not the Pope. Although Henry VIII was the major player of the English Reformation and is most obviously associated with it, his motives were very different than those of Luther, Zwingli, Calvin, and other key Protestant reformers. In his younger years, Henry VIII had actually reputed Luther's ideas in a 1521 pamphlet against Luther, for which the Pope named Henry Defender of the Faith. By 1534, Henry had different ideas about Catholicism, which led to his act of supremacy. His primary motives in splitting from the Roman Catholic Church were, first, to ensure a male heir for the Tudor line by means of a divorce which the Pope forbade him, and second, to establish that England was religiously and politically independent of Rome. Henry VIII with his mercenary motives was not the true source of reform in England. Rather, as Diamain McCullough says, Thomas Cranmer, the Archbishop of Canterbury, along with his fellow labourers such as Hugh Latimer, Nicholas Ridley, and John Hooper, were the true, quote, ecclesiastical giants, end quote, in the English Reformation. Who were these behind-the-scenes reformers? The ideas Luther had sparked in 1517 with his 95 theses eventually made their way to England and influenced churchmen there. When Henry VIII sought to divorce Queen Catherine of Aragon because she had yet to produce a male heir for him, Archbishop Thomas Cranmer, while not sanctioning the choice morally, saw an opportunity to, in the words of Douglas Bond, quote, plunder the Egyptians, end quote. Cranmer believed that since it was probable that Henry VIII was immovably decided on breaking with Catholicism anyway, it would be wiser to sanction the divorce so as to use the break with Rome as an opportunity to introduce Protestant doctrine and practice into the English church. Under Henry VIII's reign, and after Henry's death, the reign of his young son Edward VI, Cranmer and his colleagues sought to reform the church in England. To begin with, they changed the services from being in Latin to being in the vernacular. Since many of the priests were undereducated, and the people even less so, Cranmer wrote homilies full of sound biblical doctrine that the priests could read to the people during the services. Their reasoning was that, even if the priests or people did not understand initially, it would still be valuable for them to constantly have sound truth rubbing on their ears and their hearts, with the desire that eventually they would come to understand and embrace it. On a similar note, Cranmer authored the Book of Common Prayer so that the priests would be able to lead the people in rich biblical prayers to God. In 1553, the 42 articles defining the Protestant beliefs of the Anglican Church were drawn up. All these reforms took a sharp turn when Mary, known to subsequent generations as Bloody Mary, came to the throne following her brother's death in 1553. She was a staunch Catholic who sought to reunite England with Rome and to undo the work of the reformers. Trying to squelch Protestantism in England, she had Hugh Latimer, the Bishop of Worcester, and Nicholas Ridley, the Bishop of London, taken prisoner in St. Michael's Tower in Oxford, condemned as heretics and burned at the stake outside the city of Oxford. The place where these bold reformers perished in 1555 is still marked in Broad Street in Oxford by a square of cobblestones with a cross, though the rest of the street has been paved over. Reportedly, as they were about to be burned, Latimer told Ridley, Be of good comfort, Master Ridley, and play the man. We shall this day light such a candle by God's grace in England as I trust shall never be put out. But what of Archbishop Thomas Cranmer? Under pressure, Thomas Cranmer recanted his Protestant convictions, trying to persuade himself that he might be more useful to the Protestant cause alive, even if it meant recantation. However, Mary was not fully persuaded and ordered him burned anyway. Having been forced to witness the burning of his fellow reformers Latimer and Ridley from his vantage point atop of St. Michael's Tower in Oxford, Cranmer reconsidered his decisions. In a final choice made before his death, he took back his recantation, affirming his Protestant beliefs and placing his right hand, which had signed the recantation, into the flames at the stake to perish first. Though Mary may have suppressed English Protestantism for a time and even burned its foremost reformers, she could not ultimately undo its work. Under the reign of the more tolerant Elizabeth I, Mary's sister, Protestantism regained influence in England and many of Cranmer's reforms were cemented, especially the adoption of the 39 Articles in 1563, a revised version of Cranmer's original doctrinal confession for the Anglican Church. Truly, as Latimer had said at the moment of his death, the flame of the English Reformation would never be put out.